So the bridegroom walks down the aisle married to A, but at the very moment the bridegroom pledges his straw to B, the first marriage is dissolved. It's a very strange doctrine, but there it is. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking, you mentioned about usury was uh, intrinsically evil, and then it got to where, you know, it, unless it was excessive, it wasn't considered evil. And I, I, I have a sense that the birth control uh, issue is on that continuum, too, in the sense that uh, it isn't, uh, it is something that at least in my lifetime has went from, you know, uh, almost accepted as intrinsically evil and, uh, and to, uh, I guess, you know, that there are circumstances. Uh, is there a trajectory for uh, uh, change? And is a birth control issue in that trajectory? Well, uh, as to the general question of trajectory, I find it very hard to give any general law. It would be very nice if you had a general law I mean, this goes this way and you can find it and you can put a whole lot of things. I, I, I just don't see it. Maybe there is, but I, I see this, these uh, developments and you know, I can fall back on saying the spirit always works most of it. Just, you, you don't have a, a, any pattern that you can uh, follow. I said, well, as the contraception, um, I think I should say that I have written on the subject, uh, written a book, but then I wrote a, uh, uh, a follow-up after the uh, encyclical Humanae Vitae was issued. And in that follow-up, I argued that the condemnation was not as absolute in general as the American bishops, for example, interpreted. And uh, I did have the opportunity to express that view and the meeting of the bishops that was the 20th anniversary of Humanae Vitae. And I must say that their response was silence. <laughs> <laughs> But the following day, I expressed the same views to a group of women at Trinity College, who were uh, uh, mature women who were in professions, but who were, who were taking a course in theology so they could teach in the parishes, so the education for the parish service. And these precise views of my argument which has not been endorsed generally, but it's been endorsed by some. But uh, all these women who were practical mothers who were in parish service all saw the point and seemed to accept it. So, uh, I mean, that it is something that but one can't predict when or where it will be more definitively resolved. Uh, going back to the idea of the uh, scientist who makes a discovery and says the theory changes or the paradigm changes, do you have any ideas about what possible emerging paradigms might contextualize this whole change process, such as maybe democratization or multiculturalism, postmodernism, some way to contextualize change uh, that, that gives it more meaning or different? I think that's hard to do. Again, sort of asking for a, a, a rule, a model of change, which I don't see. Uh, I do think taking into account uh, global society makes it uh, harder to uh, frame moral rules that will be right for everybody. <coughs> and to give you one example from my experience on uh, 
with contraception uh, and controversy. When people uh, gather to discuss that, they tried to frame a rule for the world. But there was clearly great divergence. The people, uh, Christians from Africa, saw no need for the rule, for uh, uh, change in the rule. They welcomed children. They didn't see, the, they didn't have the same pressures uh, as an urban family in Europe. And uh, it's quite, it was quite apparent that uh, uh, the whole mindset of people on is to some degree covered, uh, caused by the uh, circumstances in which they live. So um, it is difficult to, uh, the more globally conscious and sensitive you become, the more difficult it is to frame general rules. How then do you frame rules that are binding to the inter international arena in cases of, say, genocide or torture and these things. How, doesn't that erode the ability to do that? And morally speaking, I'm not talking about international or, or the ability to enforce them, but morally speaking. Well, I think uh, at that level, uh, what you're talking about uh, moral rules that will be uh, responded to by governments. And there, of course, the, the chief problem is to persuade governments that they, uh, that they are, uh, after all, human beings who must obey a moral law. And uh, I think it's a, a constant challenge that governments think, well, we're not bomb by the moral, we're the government. And um, if you can reach the individual person and say to him, you're a Christian and you have to behave as a Christian even though you're in government, that's the big step to overcome and not the uh, geographical diversity. Because I, I would think uh, with you that today there are uh, terrible things that most human beings would say should never be done. <clears throat> I'd be quite willing to agree with that. Are there any other questions? Well, I want to thank you very much for this, for your willingness to come and have this dialogue with us, and I want to thank you even more for the magnificent contribution that you have made to the Church's reflection on these issues which are themselves eternal and, uh, and very important. Thank you very much.